Hi, I'm Dolly Simonovich. Welcome to Senior Moments. I have as a guest today a very special person, Dr. Jay Apte. She's a practitioner of Ayurvedic medicine. Welcome to our show. I'm so glad you agreed to, to talk to us. Thank you, Dolly. When it comes to Ayurveda, I get so excited. Oh. So I'm all for it. Oh, good. You know, I, I, looked, I looked at your website last huh? night and I spent, oh, I spent like an hour reviewing Ayurvedic so I know this and I know that and I know that and I still have so many questions for you. Can, you. can you tell us what Ayurvedic medicine is? So as the name says Ayurved, so it is the wisdom about healthy living. Okay. And before we go further, I just want to tell you, if we want to take charge of our own health and if we want to create health and maintain that perfect health, then everybody has to know about Ayurved because Ayurveda talks so much about health. And you know, Dolly, why our health is so important? Because without health, we cannot enjoy anything in life, right? Mm -hmm. So you may have a great job and wonderful career, but if you have that chronic pain or fatigue and all, then you cannot focus at your work. Or you may be very wealthy, but if you are not healthy, then you want to take vacation and you have arthritis, you cannot enjoy your vacation. That's correct. You Nothing. can go in fine yeah. restaurants and you have digestive issues, you cannot enjoy that. That's right. So yeah. health always comes first. Mm -hmm. And what is health after all? We always define health in terms of absence of disease. But what is disease come first or health comes first? So we all are born really healthy and Ayurveda focuses more on health. Mm -hmm. And when you are healthy, it's not only your blood work is showing or any of your tests are showing, but you have strong body and you have good appetite so you can digest all the food. Well, we don't really want to wait until, until we have tests and the tests show something bad. We want to take care of ourselves exactly, before that exactly. because by the time it's measured, mm -hmm. we're already too the, far. That's <laughs> right. Too far that's the wrong right. way. And people don't realize, but health is our responsibility too. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ayurveda gives so many tips and so many things you can do at home to create your own health. Uh -huh. So having good digestion, sleeping sound at night, a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. Having zest of energy to do anything in life, strong immune system so you can prevent all the diseases. More importantly is having that peaceful mind. You know, everybody's so stressful and all. Mm -hmm. So having focused mind, peaceful mind, clarity of mind, and having even clear thinking. So you can make right choices in life. Is it difficult to, to achieve this healthy state? It's really not. <laughs> but what you need, that's what Ayurveda talks about. What you need is the routine. When you have the routine within that space, you get so much freedom. And that's what Ayurveda is all about. And more I want to tell you one fascinating thing about Ayurveda mm -hmm. is it's not one size fits all. Ayurveda helps you to create your own health. Because think about all those people around us. They are very different. We, don't, we are not like genetic clones of each other. Right? Mm -hmm. So Ayurveda considers that or values that as a uniqueness in each individual. So our looks are different, our likes, our personalities are different. You look very outgoing and all that. Mm -hmm. So everybody has different personalities. So there is a meaning behind that. And Ayurveda considers like we have to take care of each individual differently. Are you saying that when somebody walks in, you can tell by, by whether or not they're a little bashful and shy, that they may be this, this, this type of person and they may need, they may need this and somebody comes in like me and you say, oh, she doesn't need this, she needs this. Do you know to tell You're you the truth? You're saying that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> when we even look at the person, mm -hmm. everywhere, the way they look, the way they talk, the way they walk, everything that body constitution is written on their entire personality. Mm -hmm. So when person comes to my office, I start writing on the side of the case paper, she is going to complain about this, this, this. And to tell you the truth, all the things she talks about. You just let her talk so she feels good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and another fascinating thing is Ayurveda is the science of nature. Mm -hmm. So, so far we always see the labs and everything what we do in the hospital and in doctor's office. But Ayurveda talks about our connection to the nature. 
-hmm. Don't you feel that when we go out in 100 degrees temperature, we feel very hot? Right. And when the season changes to fall, our skin becomes so dry and cold and all that. So our nature has to do a lot to us. Think about on the East Coast, mm -hmm. people are so cold with That's all right. that snow. That's and here right. we are enjoying the spring weather. Yes. And the trees have bloomed, you know, lucky we. <laughs> And that's what Ayurveda's focus is all about, staying in tune with Mother Nature. Uh -huh. It's very important and Ayurveda gives you uh, so many guidelines when you can do that daily routine and seasonal routine so you can enjoy any of the season, you can create that balance. What's included in this routine? And really Dolly, people do not have the idea about this routine. What is our routine right now is waking up at 9 or 10 o'clock and just get up and go to our computer and check our emails. We think that world will end without it, right? Mm -hmm. So Ayurveda talks about very different routine. I mentioned to you earlier that Ayurveda is based on nature, right? So in the morning, the sun rises and you have to wake up to welcome that sun. So you feel plenty of energy. So you get up at seven o'clock? I wake up at six o'clock. Six o'clock? Oh. <laughs> I'm the nine o'clock person. No. <laughs> okay. But what happened, there is a difference. In Ayurvedically, when you wake up before sunrise, you feel plenty of energy. Mm -hmm. Your mind is more peaceful and alert, and you are ready to just take this new day with lots of things to do. Mm -hmm. And when you wake up after sunrise, then, okay, maybe a few more minutes. I don't want to wake up, maybe a little later. <laughs> So our energy changes and that's where the routine begins in Ayurveda. So wake up, waking up in the morning, then getting ready, eating your breakfast, not at so, 10 or 11, me. but early. I'm going to break in here. Sure. So in the summer when the sun rises at 5 o'clock, do you get up at 4.30? Yes, I do. <laughs> and that's again the beauty about this routine. You change according to the season. Uh -huh. So life becomes very interesting mm -hmm. when you do that. So a simple Ayurvedic routine is waking up early, going to bed around 10 o'clock and eating three meals, light breakfast, good lunch and light dinner and exercise for one hour and meditate for 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then your body and mind says, okay, leave everything on us. Mm -hmm. And with that routine, you get so much freedom. You know, I get so many clients with cholesterol and hypertension and sugar out of balance. And when I put them into this routine without taking any medicine, many of their reports come back within normal range. So, so there is a secret about mm -hmm. this timing and on following the routine. So you, no snacks, just three meals a day? You can snack with the fruit, not oh, with all the have, junk food. Okay, you can have a piece of fruit you or, can eat, or definitely. a couple of nuts. You can have some, nuts, uh -huh. but they should be unsalted. Right. Because you know, mainly in our all this, what we do, we forget to eat or we don't eat. We say, I save so many calories and I end up eating junk food. And in that junk food, there is so they are loaded with salt. They are mm -hmm. loaded with sugar and they are loaded with fat. And all those three things, like a fat is also important. And you know, the new research has come that good quality fat is essential for our body. Mm -hmm. It really protects your heart. It is good for the body because fat helps to absorb some vitamins. Our whole our skin is nothing but the fat. Fat improves our digestion and all that. It makes but things taste better too, it doesn't it? It tastes better too, but <laughs> not that trans fats. Artificially hydrogenated fat mm -hmm. is really bad. And most of the junk food, like you can think about chips and crackers, all the words starting with C, cakes and cookies and crackers and <laughs> all those things are All those loaded. things I love. All those things, oh, that's yeah. right, that's I'm here. <laughs> so all those things, have a lot of trans fats which mm -hmm. are really, really bad. And the science has proved that they are also carcinogenic. So here we are trying, spending so much time and billions of dollars finding out the cause, but we have to take care of our diet too. It's very important. Another bad thing is salt. Salt is essential for nerve conduction and muscle contraction. But we end up eating 10 times, 50 times the salt. That's and it literally corrodes our body. It makes us retain water, then we gain weight, then our blood pressure rises, then we start uh, becoming obese, then diabetes is next in the line. Mm -hmm. So all these things, it becomes like a chain or the vicious cycle. So it is very important that we eat very healthy, 
and uh, many times people don't know but eating good quality fat protein and complex carb those are the called macronutrient and body needs that a lot if you eat too much salt and mm -hmm. you eat too much of this stuff, mm -hmm. doesn't it cra doesn't make your body crave more of it exactly. too? Exactly. So it kind of works against you. Think that about way. this. It's like you can't eat just one. Yeah. I was going to say that. Open the bag of chips and you eat one. Yeah. And before you know it, the whole bag is gone. So if you could eat just one, it would be okay because your body can handle that little bit. But, but you can't. <laughs> you can't. That is the problem. So get into the routine and just That's right. drop all of this other stuff. So okay. what you can do is eat fruit. So you don't just crave for all that junk food. Mm -hmm. And the third thing important is also sugar. And all this real sugar has just empty calories. But when we talk about sugar, it's more complex carb that is body needs a lot. It also has a lot of fiber. Complex carb is important for us to give energy. And what are complex carbs? All the grains, different beans. They have complex carbs, mainly mm -hmm. the rice, quinoa, wheat, buckwheat, any kind of grain you talk about. How about things yeah. like honey and aguave? Are those okay to use? They to are again good. They are good. Uh -huh. But Ayurvedically, we recommend honey to certain people. In the beginning, I was telling you Ayurveda categorizes people into different body constitution. Uh -huh. So honey has a good effect on the body. It is drying. So people who want to lose weight. They can drink a glass of water, one tablespoon honey really? in the morning, yes. And that is good for them. It will help them to, well, for the weight loss. Can we put a little tea in that too? You can do that, but <laughs> better than tea, I'll tell you, just squeeze a lemon. Uh -huh. And uh, just grate a little bit, small piece of ginger root. So uh, that is my favorite tea. Oh, so instead of tea, you grate grated ginger, lemon, little lemon, and honey. And honey and that tea tastes wonderful yeah and I can tell you the benefits of that you were complaining about allergies and what runny uh, nose watery eyes that will take care of because ginger is really? very pungent yeah I had some ginger last night yeah. so there are so many benefits of these simple spices and herbs Ayurveda also is very high on herbs dr. J you yeah. talked about body types will you go into that a little more sure First, I want to tell you a little bit background about how we come up with body constitution. Okay. As I mentioned to you earlier that Ayurveda is part of the nature. So if you look at the whole universe, what are the main three energies that we get all the different seasons? So the sun, the moon and the wind, right? So those three energies control all the changes in the universe and because she is our mother nature, those three energies work in our body too. So we call them those three energies as doshas. And that is main difference between conventional medicine and also about Ayurveda. Because conventional medicine is about physical body and treating the disease and all. And Ayurveda is all about these three energies. Because the wind energy we call as a Vata Dosha. And the sun energy we call as a Pitta Dosha. And the moon energy we call as a Kapha Dosha. And like what does wind do? Wind moves everything around, right? The same way this wind energy or vata dosha lets us do all these movements and actions in short our nervous system mm -hmm. sun like the heat that controls all the chemical reactions in the body in short our metabolism so you're talking about energy sources exactly the uh -huh. energy is behind this body mm -hmm. and the third is the water energy it controls our fluid balance in the body mm -hmm. and do you know doll it is very interesting tell me overall on the earth how much is water about 65 70 percent mm -hmm. how much is water in the body about 65 70 percent how much is water in one cell 65 70 percent so everything is connected mm -hmm. we are kind of the mini universe and what ayurveda has done is it has decoded all the secrets of mother nature mm -hmm. and that's why all those ayurvedic concepts are very beneficial for us to be healthy so what we do is this vata pitta kapha dosha when they are in that unique balance it's our health and because of our wrong eating or if we don't have a routine and all then those doshas go out of balance and it causes the disease so if you have a routine if you're one type and you have routine for a different type it's not going to work well for you exactly and that's the point mm -hmm. is looking at you i can see different qualities in you such a person um, beautiful personality and understanding and loving and caring we categorize such people as kapha dosha and when they are balanced 
they exhibit all these the strong personality very groundedness and all this but when that goes out of balance then those people suffer more from allergies or congestion or water retention or gaining weight <laughs> that's right my watery eyes exactly. today <laughs> you're saying that as you're looking at my watery eyes <laughs> Then if Pitta, the heat energy, mm -hmm. when it is in balance, those people are very organized, list makers, perfectionist, very visionary. But when that dosha goes out of balance, then they get heartburn or they may get some blisters or acne, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. When Vata people are very intuitive, imaginative, think about Miriam, very slim, slender, very active, very energetic, very intuitive. Mm -hmm. But if that Vata goes out of balance, then person start complaining about racing mind. I cannot focus on things. My skin is so dry. My elimination is not good and all those problems. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we categorize people into different subtypes we call mind body type. That is body constitution. And once you know what your body constitution is, it is very easy for you to eat right foods. And let me give you an example. If for you, I would recommend, if you are eating like oatmeal for breakfast or eating something heavy, I would recommend eat a toast because oh. you want to create lightness in the body. I eat oatmeal every day. So try eating a toast. But you know, you I've, lightened it up. I've lightened it up with millet and buckwheat. Okay, that's good. But try the toast. <laughs> and sprinkle some spices, maybe black pepper on it. And you will love it. It will just take away all your sinus problem. Black it pepper? Will, yes, that's the spice. It is hot spice. Anything hot will help you to balance. I'm telling you about spice, but if other pitta person comes to you, I will tell her to stay away from spices because she has so much heat already. So we don't want to increase heat. It mm -hmm. will go out of balance. Mm -hmm. And the third point, I will tell pitta person to eat more salad more fruits because it will cool their body down and the third person vata person she said yeah salad is so good to eat but not for her because that will make her body very dry mm -hmm. and itching and mind will start racing so we always think eating salad is good but what your body constitution is very important okay mm -hmm. and in that person i'll tell her to eat more soups or stews or warm herbal teas so warm nourishing food oatmeal will be good for her so I tell all these Vata people eat oatmeal and they say, Dr. J, is oatmeal going to change my life? And next month they come, Dr. J, oatmeal changed my life. <laughs> so if they have that one month of experience mm -hmm. behind them. Mm -hmm. And let me just ask you one thing, like you bought this sweater, not because you just liked it, but it fitted you well, right? Mm -hmm. The same way any diet or lifestyle or daily routine has to fit the person. It fits you doesn't mean it's going to fit me or it is going to fit somebody else. Mm -hmm. It is very important that you do what is fitting to your mind body type, to your body constitution. So in Ayurvedic, the first step of staying healthy is know your body constitution. It also improves your relationship with your family and career. Because I remember my friend's husband is very pitta, always kind of opinionated and argumentative. I told her, just cool her down, cool his pitta down, and now he's a nice person. <laughs> so she gets so along with wonders. him very well. You work wonders with the personality exactly, too. <laughs> exactly. Even you can pick the right career. Do you know that Vata person I was talking about, very energetic and active? If you make that person sit behind the computer and do some repetitive task, they will hate it. But just ask them to go out and talk to people and tell all the stories and uh, just do all these hand gestures and all those. Mm -hmm. They will do great in sales and marketing and mm -hmm. all that. You can even prevent many diseases. If you are Pitta, you can prevent, if you eat balanced food, you can prevent all the heartburn, GERD, acid reflux, blisters, high blood pressure, all those kind of things. So mm -hmm. knowing this body constitution is the fundamental step in Ayurveda. But let me give you an example. Suppose I said you are kapha and you want to eat heavy food. But spring is not the time, but later on you can eat that heavy food. So Ayurveda is very kind of, lets you eat what you want to eat, but during certain season, during that seasonal routine, season uh -huh. routine is very important. Are you going to wear your heavy winter jacket right now? No. No. Why? Because season has changed. Too warm. Then right now you are wearing a sweater. Are you going to wear the same sweater during summertime no. when the weather is hot? No. Why? Because again, the season has changed. 
So it's not only the clothes, but the food we eat makes all the difference. And that seasonal routine is so powerful. That's what, our, and Mother Nature helps us to do that. Mm -hmm. When do you get all the green leafy vegetables during summer? summer? All the melons, watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew melon, because they have cooling effect on the body. Even all the jasmines bloom during summer time. Yes. And jasmines are white. White color repels heat. Their fragrance is very cooling. But the mistake we make, we eat the same watermelon during Christmas party, when the season is cold. Okay, then during that time... We should time, be eating warm. Exactly, warm exactly. During winter season, you should be eating warm foods. And you get all the squashes and pumpkins and mm -hmm. all the root vegetables. Yes. And that's why those are right. So if you go to farmer's market, you will get exactly the right produce which is in the season. And another thing which is growing in your own environment. Because same effect of the air and the sun and the water and all on our body with the same produce. Uh -huh. So if you look at those subtle things and follow these routines, health is there for you to help and you can enjoy all your life. And especially these are, you mentioned about the senior moment, right? So as we become more senior, it's very important that we take care of our own health. Now I looked at your, at your website, uh -huh. it was very interesting. Yeah. And you had a little test on there. Yes. And on the test, I came out a little more, some of the, some of the questions I thought, now just a minute, I'm, I like this, like this, like this, so I'm all three of those things. Exactly. And so I didn't know how to answer. So I did the predominant one, of course. Uh -huh. And I came out pretty equal, almost equal in them. Do you know that's why I'm here? That's why you have to go to the Ayurvedic practitioner. Mm -hmm. Because there is so many things you have to read in between lines. Mm -hmm. Because many times what happens, people read these books and they come up with a questionnaire, go through that, and they say, I'm Pitta, I'm Kapha. They do what they want to be. It's not what you want to be, <laughs> who you are. Because and then you have all these uh, inner talents. You mm -hmm. can make the best use of that. And once you know who you are, then it is very easy. And that really puts all the pieces of puzzle into right place. And we have one more very fascinating and interesting thing to prevent the disease is also we do a special detox or cleansing procedure mm -hmm. called panchakarma. Uh -huh. And that panchakarma is kind of a elaborate, very calming, very nurturing, one week long therapy. Think about again, Ayurvedically our whole body is like millions of miles of highways. Uh -huh. Okay, everything is flowing in the body. Our nutrition, our food is flowing, our breath is flowing, our blood is flowing, emotions are flowing, thoughts are flowing. So everything is flowing in the body. So it's like a highway. But what will happen if there is an accident or the road construction? Then the traffic gets jammed and no cars can move. Then it starts building tension in people's mind and, and body. And that's what causes disease. That's what causes the disease. And that's what this panchakarma is very, very beneficial. Keeps because everything it, moving. Exactly. It cleanses all your channels in the body. All the highways are clean. So all these uh, food and breath and your emotions, everything is flowing freely. Mm -hmm. And emotions, by the way, I want to tell you, Ayurveda is not only the science about physical body. We talk about beingness. We are a human being. And that beingness is having the physical body, but also having mind and also spirit. So Ayurveda is mind, body, spirit science. So that's, that's why you said earlier to make sure that you get us that you have a routine, exactly. that you eat properly in that routine, mm -hmm. and that you exercise as part of that routine. And there's a, there must be a meditation, meditation in there Meditation in then. the morning. Uh -huh. And wake up in the morning, meditate for 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. plan your whole day, and then start doing things. That mindfulness is the key. When you are eating, when you are watching the movie, don't eat popcorn. When you are eating popcorn, don't do anything else. When you are at work, just work. <gasps> So no more movies with popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> no more sitting there and watching television while you're eating. And do you know? Because you may feel, well, boy, can you it's, put on, it's so boring. It's not. Well, can you put on music and listen to music while you're eating? You can do that. But, but, but at the same time, when you are eating, you have to sit at the dining table. Don't watch that show. And because what happens many times, if you are watching some serious horror movie, and you are not eating food, you are eating that emotion. People don't realize that subtle effect of all our environment on us, but it is very, very important. 
I notice sometimes that I'll eat, and if I'm watching television, I'll look down and my food's gone. Your food gone? And I don't remember eating it. Exactly. Why? Because, because your mind... Because I'm not in the, in the moment. Exactly. Because your mind wasn't in eating yes. food, yes. but your mind was busy watching the TV. That's right. And why did you eat? That's right. Why did I eat? Exactly. But when you are eating, <laughs> do this experiment, go home and eat one grape just watch, while watching TV. And one grape, close your eyes and enjoy that flavor and enjoy the texture and the juice. And that's why the first bite always tastes so good and the second is less. And exactly. the third, by the third, you get bored. Exactly. That's what our life is. Body is doing one thing, mind is wandering somewhere else. So we are absent-minded. <laughs> Let's stop here and we'll take a break. We'll be right back. You know the old saying, the grass is always greener on the other side. Well, it may look that way, but when you get up close, it's all weeds and stickers. Those big company TV providers may have great introductory offers, but read the fine print. Do you have to sign a long-term contract? Do they offer free service calls? And just how high do their rates go after the limited time offer expires? At San Bruno Cable, you sign no long-term contract. Our rates are easy to understand without surprises, and if you experience a problem, we offer free service calls on the next business day. Thank you for choosing San Bruno Cable. In today's tough economy, there's a lot of people out there promising easy solutions to your debt. Solutions that claim to reduce payments and get you back on your feet in no time at all. But many of these schemes are predatory. They can destroy your credit rating, costing more than your original debt, and even drive you into bankruptcy. There are no quick or easy solutions to getting a handle on your finances. But knowing who to turn to can make all the difference. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling, a nonprofit organization with members in your community, can help you create a personalized plan to get you on the road to recovery and help you make sound financial decisions in the future. The NFCC is a trusted and reputable organization with solid relationships with creditors. Unlike predatory consolidators, our counselors help you for little or no fee. Knowing the difference can make all the difference. To connect with a certified counselor in your community, call us or visit debtadvice.org. Welcome back to Senior Moments. I'm here with Dr. J. And would you tell us a little bit about meditation? So, Dolly, generally we always are in this physical world about the physical body and our looks and all that, right? But within us, we feel very anxious, so stressed out, nervous and all that. So that is our emotional state. And Ayurvedically, we take care of the body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is about calming that mind because mind is jumping like a monkey from one thought to other thought. It's constantly racing. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn to calm down that thing. And Ayurveda, there are so many different ways you can meditate. But some of the powerful things are just focus your mind on your breath. So let us do that example, for example, okay? Okay. So touch your feet on the ground okay. and close your eyes and take a deep, long breath and balloon your belly when you inhale. I'm and trying to hold my belly in. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to pull your belly in. Just you want listen me to, to you me. You want me to pull my, push my belly out okay. on television? Okay, I'll do and it. And now exhale and pull your belly in as much as you can. And again, inhale and balloon the belly. And exhale and pull the belly in. And continue breathing that way by focusing on your belly. And notice that when you exhale, when you pull the belly in, your body is completely relaxed. And just observe your mind slowly. And mind slowly starts becoming slow and starts getting focused. And do longer exhalation. And let your mind observe your body and the breath. Now 
And now gently open your eyes. How did you feel? I don't want to move. You, exactly. You don't this want to move. This interview is done. I don't want to move. But oh, your no, mind I'm, is I'm just very kidding. Calm. <laughs> but mind is very calm. You know, I used to, I used to teach physical education. Mm. And I, I learned some relaxation techniques. Mm -hmm. And I, I did that. Mm -hmm. I had them all laying on the floor. A bunch of seventh graders laying on the floor, twitching. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and I had them quiet their breath and then go each part of their body, mm -hmm. relaxing each part of the mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. Some could not do it, and some would just pass out like just that. Just like that. Yeah, it was exactly. really, exactly. really very interesting. But I found that that te technique, if you did that for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. boy, it was as good as a two-hour nap or two-hour two hour hour rest. Exactly. Yes, it was that very is, interesting. That is so powerful because doing all those things, you calm your mind down. But and then we be... talk about thoughts and intellect. Even when the mind is calm, you go beyond it. Uh -huh. And even thought, then you go further beyond it. And well, you, you just fall become asleep? one. You don't fall asleep you in don't meditation. Feel, you don't fall asleep, but you feel that profound peace within. Mm -hmm. And that peace is so important. Because I get so many patients, and about 60-70% of the time, their illness is connected to their emotional state. And many people have asthma or ulcers or psoriasis, so many problems, and the cause is at the emotional state. And emotions? Un yes, the mind and emotions. Unless we take care of that level, body will not heal. Because mind is an energy. It doesn't have a physical existence. So all those, our anxiety and worry and fear and depression and sadness and all, it has to manifest somewhere and it manifests in the physical body. And there is so much research going on. I will tell you there are a couple of documentaries, what the bleep do you know? Or the connection, mind-body connection and all. And all those documentaries have shown and proved in the lab that mind calms down. It helps in many cancer patients. It helps in heart attacks. It helps to reduce your blood pressure. It helps to focus your mind. So meditation is beneficial at all these levels. So you have the effect of the film meditation on physical body, and that has been becoming very, very popular. And they call metaphysical. And that's what we call these days, this is the era of integrative medicine. Integration of conventional medicine along with other healing philosophies to achieve that perfect health. So you are saying that your emotions can cause Diseases. disease. Yes. Because it, manif it has to manifest somewhere, and the only place it has On is the in physical your body. body. Physical body is only the manifestation. Uh -huh. Or our intellect, our thoughts, our emotions, they are all the energies. So they need some physical thing to manifest on it. And that happens on the body. And we end up treating and giving so many pills and doing surgeries and all, but actually the disease not is being taken care of because its root may be in the physical, in the emotional state. Mm -hmm. And when talking about uh, the root, that's what I want to Dolly tell you, the difference between our conventional medicine and Ayurvedic treatment. Here what we do, you have congestion. You say decongestant. You cannot sleep at night, you take sleeping pill. You have something, your knee is hurting, take a pain medication, right? Mm -hmm. So what we uh, try to do is we take a symptomatic treatment. But remember, symptom is the effect. For that effect, there has to be some cause. And unless you take care of the cause of the problem, symptom will never get You'll better. always be taking those pills. You will end up taking pills and your the allergies your still, the uh -huh. moment you stop it, allergies come That's back. That's right. You have to get rid of the cause. Exactly, the cause. And many times what happens, we always say that this bacteria is the cause, this is the cause. But Ayurvedically, we are the biggest bacteria. Many times what we do, and let me give you an example, spring is here where there is so much moisture in the environment and you are drinking, taking that uh, antihistamine pill with glass of ice cold water. But that ice cold water is going to increase your congestion. Mm -hmm. So you have to avoid that because that is that coldness in the body, too much moisture in the body, you are getting allergies. So Ayurveda says change your diet. Exercise more. So in Ayurveda, we always take care of the cause of the problem. Yes. And about majority of the time, about what we eat or what we uh, daily routine is, that becomes the problem. <laughs> that becomes the cause. And when we change it, 
then the effect naturally goes off because the symptom is the effect. So we can tell our, our viewers today, mm -hmm. you yes. know that your routine is bad. <laughs> you know, people say to me all the time, I know I shouldn't eat this, but I'm going to. And I think, hmm, you know, you're going to pay the price. That's right. And the That's more right. you do it, the more you do what's wrong that you know is wrong. Exactly. The worse it's going to be, and you're going to pay. You're going to pay with arthritis. You're That's going to pay with high blood pressure. You're going to pay with high cholesterol. Exactly. And and then they start taking the drugs, and then the drugs have side, side effects. Effect. Then you take more. Yeah. And you have to take a drug for the side effect. That's right. Because you have a new symptom. Yes. Well, uh, remember, Dolly, I will never tell my client that your routine is bad. I will tell them, you can improve it. Uh. Just follow Ayurved and just I give them these tips. And literally, I have so many clients. When they follow this routine, they start seeing the symptoms just disappearing. And they said, what is in, uh, you always tell us to go to bed around 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And they, do you know what time people go to bed? At 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And I tell the people to wake up around 5 or 6. And they're going to bed just before that. So they are not sleeping on time. No. But then what happens? At night we have to sleep so all our internal organs take care of all the healing. Do you know why when sick people sleep a lot? Because during sleep our body is healing. When we are resting our body, when we are resting our mind, body is healing. Body gets time. So sleeping on time, getting up on time, following this routine and all is very important. And in that routine, I also mentioned to you that one hour of exercise. And that one hour of exercise also depends on what your body constitution is. If your kapha will tell you, okay, go and do some aerobic activity. Do the brisk walking. Mm -hmm. Or if you are interested, do Zumba dancing. Or something, you will move your body so you will stay in shape. And if there is a pitta person, I'll tell him to swim. Or go like a, for the jog or walk early morning or in the evening. Mm -hmm. Or play golf. Golf is like they're playing against themselves. Mm -hmm. Because pitta people are very competitive. I always have to win. I have to be on the top. Are they? Are they? Always. always. This so, is funny because I was a PE teacher. Mm -hmm. But I never had to win. It, See? It, it wasn't a good combination That's for a what PE I was teacher. <laughs> you are kapha type. You will come more kapha. You play for fun. That's but right. You people play to win. Yes. Then I tell them to swim or play golf because they're playing against kinda, themselves. I kind of let them win. I, I don't. I don't make it easy for them to win, but but I, I just let them win because then they're so happy and I'm happy too because then they're fun to be with because they're they right. won. All right. Oh, hey, good job. <laughs> And same way with those vata, slim, slender, very people mm -hmm. who are kind of constantly mm -hmm. running around like a busy bee. Yes. For them, yoga, a qigong, or tai chi, meditation. Oh, they breathing. they do. They need the slower ones. They need to calm down. They need the slower one. The concept is balancing. I see. Achieving yes. that harmony and the balance. Uh -huh. If they are running around, they need to calm down. If person is more couch potato, they need to move their body. Mm -hmm. If they are hot, bring the coolness in them. So constantly, every moment, we are trying to achieve that balance through the daily routine, through the seasonal routine. Well, you're talking about this hot and cold thing. I don't, yes. I don't know if I quite understand that. Mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the winter, you should eat warm things because it's cold outside exactly. and you need to warm your body. Exactly. And in the spring and summer, it's, cooler, and it's warmer, so you need cooler things. So then it's okay to have ice water in the, in the summer. Because cold water or cool water, not, not ice. ice water. Oh, ice water never Sorry. for anybody? See, do you know what that ice does? Do you know, if you go around the world, it's only here in the U.S. you have to tell them, I want no ice. Rest of the world, if you want ice, because you get everything without ice. Mm -hmm. And that ice is literally the culprit, because it weakens your digestion. Ice weakens your digestion? Yes, because your digestion, digestive enzymes is like a digestive fire is the heat and you are constantly pouring ice cold water on top of it. So you are trying to put it up and then you have digestive issues and you suffer from all those things. So if you do one thing, just stay away from that ice. 
Yes, during summer time you can drink cool, mm -hmm. but not ice cold. Too much ice is the problem. Uh -huh. And especially as we get older, our body starts becoming more vata body constitution or vata lifestyle. So body is very cold, circulation is the problem mm -hmm. and all. So especially old people should stay away from this cold. And that's why you have to start drinking warm water. You will see amazing benefits by if you just switch from ice cold water to warm water. Few people kind of argue with this, no, uh, drinking ice water is good because it goes in your system and it burns few calories to bring the temperature up. But before even it burns calories, it does the damage. Mm -hmm. The moment your ice cold water touching your stomach, it starts weakening your digestive fire. And that causes the problem. Then you get congestion. Then you get so many digestive issues. And Ayurvedically, our digestion is kind of the doorkeeper. So many of the diseases, the cause is in digestion. Mm -hmm. And once we take care of that, so many things change. Mm -hmm. So simple things, ice cold water, so many ice co cold things especially are not good for the body. Did you say ice cream? Ice cream sometimes ice cream. only <laughs> scoop, not with your meal. Uh -huh. You can have it kind of in between, uh -huh. but during summertime. But don't eat the same ice cream during winter because it's cold, you're mm -hmm. creating more coldness in the body. Okay. So, the only simple thing, take a hint from your clothes. If you are wearing cool clothes, cool cotton clothes, you can eat more cooling foods. But when you switch to winter jacket or spring jacket and all, you want to keep your body warm, you have to be eating warm foods. Dr. J, tell me your background. My background is I'm from India. You can see, figure that out. Yes. And since childhood, I was always drawn to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. and heal people mm -hmm. and when it came to go to medical school we had a choice to only conventional medicine and my degree is in both i have learned ayurved along with conventional medicine so our degree was integrated and my role model was my grandmother she lived for 96 no diabetes no cholesterol no heart problem no cancer she passed away at 96 just because she was old and she lived her whole life, she was so healthy. And when we were growing up, she always had take this ginger tea and take this pinch of uh, spices and all and your problems will go away. So when I grew up, I saw her boy, she was telling us and it was so fascinating for the whole family. And when I learned Ayurved, I said, boy, she was more than Ayurvedic doctor. So my background is both in Ayurved and conventional medicine. And I graduated more than 40 years ago. And then I followed my husband, came to US, and I was completely lost. You can imagine 35 years ago, telling people I'm an Ayurvedic doctor. Nobody mm -hmm. believed me. They said, you are just high school graduate. Nobody knew what it was. No, they, they had no clue, and I understand. So I did master's in pharmacology. I just wanted to see how the conventional medicine and all these medicines work and all this. I wanted to do some research in Ayurvedic herbs. But when I started working in the labs and with mice and rabbits and all, my heart was more into healing people. And that time this alternative medicine was just kind of taking the PAP. So I told my husband and he told me, whatever you believe, start doing it. And I always believed in Ayurveda and focusing more on prevention rather than treating the disease. Mm -hmm. So I got into Ayurvedic practice and you won't believe I was in Dallas, Texas that time. I practiced there for 15 years, but California was always calling me. And I came to California and I just started practicing here because California is the leader for all these alternative medicines. Mm -hmm. And people are so open-minded and people want to try something new, something new age. And I'm really happy I made that right choice. And I also uh, offer Ayurvedic school. So a lot of even doctors want to learn Ayurveda because they see some, every science has limitations. I respect conventional medicine, but when it comes to life-threatening situations or emergencies, definitely yes. you go to the doctor. Don't sit and do meditation and mm -hmm. change the diet. Right. But when it comes to chronic diseases and all, there are limitations in conventional medicine, and Ayurveda is a great integration for that aspect. 
Now, I understand that you, you're on the radio, is that correct? Yes, I talk on Indian radio every Tuesday. Oh, it's an Indian radio? Indian radio. Uh -huh. uh, but you speak English. I speak English. So anybody, <laughs> on the radio. On that's the radio right, speak, that's right. So anybody could listen to anybody it. Anybody can listen <laughs> okay. and they can call. It's a call-in show. Uh -huh. And I give a lot of healthy tips and home remedies and answer people's questions. When are you on radio? It's 11.70 a.m. Uh -huh. uh, Tuesday in the afternoon from 2.30 to 3 o'clock. I'm sure and that, that show is very popular. So many people listen to oh, that. Oh, really? Are you having fun doing it? I enjoy that. I enjoy <laughs> that. Because I reach so many people while I'm on the radio. Uh -huh. And then people keep calling me. And the most important thing is they get fascinating results. Because they are just tired and they're doing symptomatic treatment. They're not feeling relief. Mm -hmm. And then they don't enjoy their life. Yes. But when they come to Ayurveda and start changing, we give wonderful Ayurvedic herbs. And they start getting digestion is improved, sleeping sound at night, the skin is healing and all that. So I would strongly urge all the people to integrate this. Though this is foreign, but this is something for you. Some, it will give you tips that you can take care of your own health Even sitting at home. Even if they follow one or two exactly. of, the, of the things that you mentioned, exactly. it will help them. It will help them. So a few things here and there. But that will start, they're seeing the changes. Mm -hmm. And then they come and they say, Dr. J, tell me more. A few years ago, we were talking about Atkins diet. Mm -hmm. And nobody's talking about Atkins diet. Right. Few years ago, there was no fat. Just right. stay away from fat. Yes. But now we realize that some good fat is essential for the no body. No egg yolks. No. Nobody <laughs> would eat egg yolks. But these days, if you hear <laughs> even the new thing, new research, and the cardiologists are telling people that you need good quality of fat mm -hmm. in your diet. And what a good quality fat. Uh, coconut oil has become very popular. And you Another you like thing that? like a butter, when we cook that, we call ghee. And ghee is clarified butter. Ghee and coconut oil are the best fats. And they have medium chain fatty acids. And well, that's now, why. Now, ghee is dairy products, though. No, what happens when you cook butter and all, all the milk solids stay to the bottom. Uh -huh. All the water is evaporated. And what you get is 100% fat. So oh, yeah. literally people who are allergic to milk, milk products, they easily can digest ghee. And I cannot tell you the benefits of ghee. Mm -hmm. Ghee improves your digestion. It is cooling in nature. It boosts your immune system. Mm -hmm. It is good for your mind, good for all. So, and, but again, there should be the moderation. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying just have a cup of ghee, no. but have like two or three teaspoons of ghee throughout the day and you will see the benefits of it. Mm. You know, let me give you a simple tip. Drink a glass of warm water and add one teaspoon of ghee and drink that in the morning, early morning, right after brushing your teeth. And you will see, you feel so wonderful because it you, lubricates your whole body and your skin becomes nice and smooth, mm -hmm. and it starts becoming radiant. Even the sesame oil, a lot of people don't know sesame the benefits oil? of sesame oil. Mm -hmm. And sesame oil has a warming effect on the body. And especially during fall and winter time, when the skin becomes so dry and rough and itchy, yeah. so you can just massage with warm sesame oil and leave that oil on for 15 minutes because your skin is going and to absorb. And then take a shower. Take a shower and you will feel so well rested. Dr. J, it's been such a delight talking to you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dolly, and for all these questions. Oh, so I was just kind of so excited it about... It was my pleasure. I learned something, and I hope our viewers did too. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Dolly Simonovich, and I'll see you next time.